Okay, so I am Jamal Hadi Salim. This is Pedro Tamela. We are going to describe a few experiments we did uh, on the NVIDIA Bluefield for TLS and compare it to user space versus KTLS. Right, so uh, this work is being done at Bloomberg. Our co author, Nabil Bitar, uh, was part of this. I'm going to go over some very, very quickly over some high level overview of what TLS and KTLS is. And, and then I will, I will uh, describe some test setup, how we, we set up the tests. And, and Pedro is going to jump into the results. Okay. So this, this work is building up on previous presentations that were done here. One on uh, characterization of x86 by someone from Intel. Another one on KTLS, hardware offload by NVIDIA. Alexander, probably somewhere here, did uh, try to offload, to move KTLS handshake into the kernel, right? And we actually now more believers after this work of maybe perhaps moving the KTLS handshake into the, the TLS handshake into the kernel may be actually a good idea, as our results will show. Okay. Just as a reminder, if you're doing KTLS, there are two protocols. There's what's known as the handshake protocol, where you exchange your handshake with the remote. Once you're done, you offload sort of like what DCO is trying to do. You offload uh, your, your crypto down here, and you run what's known as a record protocol. We started out by focusing just on the record protocol, but at some point, we had no choice but to investigate some anomalies we were seeing, which led us to look a little bit closer at the, at the record uh, at the handshake protocol. This is how our test uh, setup looks like. We have a, we tried to create reproducible results. Initially, what we we're trying to do is to do mass scaling by doing RSS and all that good stuff. But eventually what we settled down to is in order for us to keep reproducing our results and to be fair, regardless of the three scenarios we are running, we pinned, we basically used attached NGINX to one of the CPUs. We tied IRQs uh, to another CPU. And this is a very simplified Kubernetes setup. There is a pod inside a VM. It didn't make a difference if we run this in bare metal Kubernetes or uh, by, putting, by moving a VF into a pod. Right, the results were very similar, so we stuck with just uh, using a VM. So on the sending side, you can see that we have a WRK. And we use this for a good reason. There's also another uh, worker node there that is running uh, bare metal Kubernetes over VETH. This is the classical way of doing Kubernetes. And this is the offloaded version of Kubernetes. Okay. Uh, so our testing basically constituted uh, running a variety of request test files. Um, two HTTP connections were started from the client all the way to the server. Uh, WRK traffic generator opened open those connections. Each, we ran three test runs, each 25 seconds, which was sufficient to create reproducible results. And then we looked at the throughput, transactional request, and transactional uh, performance, as well as request latency. So WRK measures uh, latency of uh, you know, you, you do a HTTP get, you get a response, then it builds a histogram and measures how much uh, time was spent on each. Okay, this is our test setup. Uh, you can go over the slides after because we've got a lot more interesting stuff to show. I'm just gonna skip it, look at the slides afterwards. So as I said earlier, uh, what we have is a, a, we did a task set to pin NGINX to the red CPU. An IRQ bound was bound to the yellow CPU for the net. So the network stack is processing here. User space essentially and somewhere around the socket boundaries is running over here. Packets would come all the way on the 25 gig connection. Uh, the blue field would forward them directly into the pod, right? So it's as if the pod was sitting on the wire, okay? Um, and I'm gonna go into some results. So. In, Starting with transactional results, what, uh, so initially I said, all right, let's just collect, you know, for transactions, let's just for each file size with UTLS, user space TLS versus kernel TLS versus kernel TLS offload 
on those two there. And we were collecting just the transaction results, and then, you know, it didn't quite seem to make sense. So what we ended up doing was all, uh, capturing the CPU utilized. The green was on the ARM cores that are sitting on the NVIDIA uh, Bluefield. Yellow, like I demonstrated, is this network stack, basically. Red is the host uh, somewhere between the kernel and user space, right? And you can see, uh, yeah, as a, this is just 1K file, and of course, we are testing many different types of files. As you start seeing uh, some inconsistency on how we measure, is this better, for example, just because this guy has higher throughput or transactional throughput, uh, I'm sorry, that one there, is it better than this? When you have the CPU utilization is pretty low, slightly higher with that. So we, we basically couldn't, uh, these results were not meaningful to visualize, so we came up with some formula. We're also trying to be clever with the math here. So the formula is as follows. You take the transactional throughput, how many HTTP requests per second you're able to achieve, square it, divided by summation of, uh, by summing up the red CPU and the yellow CPU. Uh, you sum them up, you see how much CPU did I spend, and then you, and the reason we picked the square is because, let's say, we want to give preference to throughput, or transactional throughput. If somebody came up with, achieved only two gigabits, versus somebody else achieved 16 gigabits for twice the CPU. Now, if I have a 25 gigs uh, pipe and I'm paying for that, I want the 16 gig, right? So the, the idea was every, so this was sort of uh, incrementally, every CPU gets some credit points. So the one gig gets one point, two gig gets two, three gets three, and then the, over time you realize that you're just squaring the numbers basically. So that's why the, t, the N is two here. Okay, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Pedro. Okay, so we have the graphs for the uh, formula that you all presented. So we have uh, user space TLS as the blue bar, uh, KTLS as the red bar, and KTLS offload as the yellow bar. And we are incrementing the file size from left to right instead of freeze. And initially we had the ROI results for the tests without the uh, AES CPU acceleration on. We also tested that. But they started degrading uh, very quickly, so we took them off. And uh, from the graph here, we can observe that KTLS and KTLS offload start pretty badly on short flows. And they become more competitive to user space TLS uh, as the file size increases. And by request of 64K, uh, KTLS offload uh, already shows a higher uh, return of investment uh, over both KTLS and user space TLS. Uh, by 128 kilobytes, uh, we see that KTLS offload is already a clear winner, and KTLS passes user space TLS. By one mag, uh, KTLS offload is a clear winner across all implementations, and by one gig, uh, KTLS offload is a no-brainer. So we can summarize the throughput results into these points. Uh, user space uh, TLS is the king of short flows. KTLS and KTLS offload start to show promising results beyond 64 kilobytes. And KTLS offload CPU consumption uh, stays constant. Uh, so we saw about a 35% reduction in CPU accounted for the application uh, when compared to the other implementations. Uh, so as we were going through these results uh, and we were uh, checking the other presentations at NetDev, we saw that they didn't mention uh, the latency aspect of the testing. And as we, going, as we were going through the WRK results for latency, we saw some pretty interesting numbers there. So in this graph, we plot the latency percentiles for each implementation. And as uh, and we have the blue bar as the 50th percentile, the red as the 75th, and yellow as the 90th, and 90th, and the yellow, and finally the green, the 99th. So as we can see for short flows, uh, 
we see that KTLS performs okay, but KTLS offload, the 9th and 99th percentile are exploding. And we see the same trend uh, for the other file sizes. And when we get to one, one gigabyte, which is an elephant flow, we see that the percentiles are okay-ish for all the implementations. So we had four theories for why this was happening. Uh, the first was perhaps it could be the crypto engine setup that was taking too long or network noise, some obscure misconfiguration, perhaps some VM overhead. But we were testing a controlled environment. So the network noise was minimal to non-existent. Uh, obscure misconfiguration and VM overhead were discarded because we were able to reproduce similar results in, the, in a bare metal setup. So that left us with the crypto engine setup. So we started investigating that. And uh, on KTLS, every time a new socket is created, uh, Nginx has to perform the TLS handshake in user space and then issue an extra system call, set socket PT, to set up the TLS keys. And if we disregard tricks like session resumption, um, we can estimate the total number of TLS handshakes done throughout the entire test with the formula D times R divided by K. So where D is the test duration, K R is the total number of HTTP requests done uh, in the test, and K is a fixed constant, which in this case is gonna be the NGINX keep alive parameter. So this parameter is essentially how many times NGINX will reuse the same socket uh, to serve HTTP requests, and by default, this is uh, a thousand. So in this graph, uh, which is not very visible, uh, the blue bar is requests per second, and the red bar is our TLS handshake estimation. And if we vary the NGINX keep alive parameter from 100, 1,000 to a million, it's clearly visible uh, in a short flow that as the number of handshakes goes down, throughout, uh, throughput got better across all implementations. But notice the impact on offload especially, uh, which is the right most tests. Um, when there is one handshake, which would be the one million uh, keep alive parameter, offload performs very closely to software KTLS. And by 120K, when we increase the file size, uh, KTLS offload jumps ahead of everyone. And remember, this is while you're consuming 35% less CPU. And this also happens for the latency graphs. So as we in increase, sorry, decrease the number of TLS handshakes, the latency got much, much better. And, but the same effect is not observed on the other implementations. This also happens for uh, file sizes, which are uh, bigger than 1K. So this led us to conclude that KTLS offload especially has a handshake setup problem. And the number of SOC setups uh, clearly influences the latency percentiles for KTLS offload. But as a quick solution, just keep reusing the same socket every time, but this is still very dependent on the application. And hardware offload brings a lot of savings for TLS applications. And besides more CPU being available for the application itself, this improvement translates directly into more energy efficient. So if you have like a huge deployment, this is very interesting. So we started going deeper to understand why the handshake was impacting latency that much. And by going deeper into the KTLS SOC setup, we can analyze where the bottleneck is inside the set SOC OPT system call itself. So we can use ftrace, perftrace, any of the tracing um, or tools that we have. And, but we already know that KTLS offload, uh, it's expensive as we saw from the other uh, results, but we need to know by how much. So we did a very simple tracing uh, in, in Nginx, and we can see a huge difference between KTLS and KTLS with offload. So note that there are two extra system calls for each socket. That's because we are doing uh, both TX and RX. 
and the first one on offload takes almost four milliseconds to set up the 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 the, the side of the offload, and the second one takes about one and a half milliseconds, which is a lot when you are doing uh, performance testing. So each SOC, each set SOC OPT does a call into the NVIDIA driver, and that will set up not only the, the driver itself, but the NIC. So inside the driver uh, with uh, F-Trace, we see that the culprits are two functions. And the first function, which takes almost two milliseconds in itself, builds the TLS keys and pushes it to the firmware. And the second fun function, which takes about two milliseconds as well, prepares the driver uh, and the NIC to handle the decryption and encryption of incoming packets. So as we saw in this presentation, uh, the cost of the SOC setup is much higher with other offload. And the culprit, in our case, is the driver offload setup, as it takes a long time, as it happens for each set SOC uh, OPT system call. So as the flow size increases, so does the socket lifetime, which improve the overall stats for hardware offload. But despite offload suffering in the initial tests, KTLS at best matched user space TLS. And the real improvements for both KTLS implementations are only observed on requests beyond 64K. So why is KTLS offload desired in the first place? So KTLS and KTLS offload brings a lot of improvements that user space TLS cannot anymore. And despite the overall, sorry, and despite the reduced overall cost, they also improve uh, performance. And crypto ASICs will usually perform better at much uh, lower energy consumption, even when compared to existing CPU crypto accelerators. And by doing the encryption and decryption in the kernel itself, we can leverage send file to serve HTTP requests uh, with transparent encryption. Okay, so what's next for KTLS? It's obviously a very interesting feature that uh, it's very useful in the real world. So there are still improvements to be made as we saw in this presentation. And while KTLS offload looks like it can be further improved with code optimizations, KTLS in general seems like it suffers from an architecture limitation. And expanding beyond uh, elephant flows will be a challenge. Perhaps it's time we look into TLS handshakes in the kernel, or perhaps a different architecture altogether. So that's what we had for today. Uh, thanks, everyone. Questions? Yeah. Boris. Boris, no hard questions. <laughs> More comment by the question. Uh, hi, Boris. This uh, many flow in video. Um, so we are aware of uh, this issue. We are working to fix it. There uh, is supposed to be a patch set that uh, addresses this issue. So I hope that uh, next year we will have a talk about how it was fixed. Uh, uh, in addition to that, I would like to say that this is not an architectural issue. It's more uh, of an implementation issue. The uh, key establishment part was not a focus for our early work. And now that we see this as a, an emerging problem, we are gradually addressing it. And it's going to become better and better in the next generation. Like two, three years from now, it's going to be even better than it. Uh, so actually, Boris, question for you there is, uh, so one of the, of course, for elephant flows or for things that do streaming or storage works great, right? The short flows is, is a big challenge still. The setup cost seems to be much higher than to amortize the effect of setting up. The setup cost really needs to improve, right? If I have only, let's say, six packets, I don't know if that's common anymore. I guess no more HTTP 1.0 anymore. But what, I don't know what the traffic patterns are these days, right? Um, when I last looked at this, so web objects are becoming larger and larger, and connections are getting more, uh, like long, you, you look at HTTP2, you, you have keep alive, things yes. such as that. Uh, 
connections are getting aggregated into a single fetal connection. So things will look like more uh, fat flows hopefully in the future. And so this will be mitigated. Obviously, when you add hardware to the mix, there would be a cost, but this is an implementation issue that we can work and improve to make it a smaller cost as possible. Okay. A couple of questions from the bridge. Um, if, if a KTLS handshake inside the kernel is a good idea, maybe FPU in soft IRQ is not so, un is not so unpleasant idea. Handshake processing can benefit from it a lot, at least under a k-config flag. This okay, is from okay. Ivan. So I guess, uh, Alexander, maybe we'll have to put you on the spot because he's implemented in the, in the kernel. So I, I didn't realize there was F, uh, FPUs involved. Somebody get him a mic. Right. Uh, they, they all uh, so, uh, yeah, it wasn't clear. Sorry. Yes, FPUs are, are a problem. Uh, yes, in our implementation, we do TOS handshakes right in uh, soft IQ. And we, um, since um, saving and restoring FP is uh, expensive, we do this uh, once per uh, soft IQ shot. So we save FPU, we do a lot of uh, TOS handshakes with accelerated uh, vector instructions, and we restore the FPU state. This is uh, exactly Ivan's question. Uh, so in our implementation, which we're preparing for upstream, we have uh, uh, configuration options to do, do the stuff in software queue. And uh, for, for this talk, I was wondering, uh, why did you uh, test HTTP 1? In my understanding, nowadays, uh, like uh, as much as uh, possible guys moving to HTTP 2, and with HTTP2, we cannot use KTLS at all because uh, with HTTP2, we have a fra message framing. It means that when we send a large object, we have to add a framing, um, framing data about um, the chunks. So we need to go to um, uh, user space, and the flows are always changing. So we cannot just uh, send the whole big object via the kernel. Uh, the same stuff with uh, Quick, um, yeah. You mean why we use send file? Uh, yeah, it seems that um, the world is slowly moving from the send file to pull uh, user space uh, workloads, especially with uh, Quick. Yeah, so I, I think the constraints, which I should have mentioned in the past few slides, the constraints we had was we wanted to test the hardware offload, mm -hmm. which does AES-128, I believe. And, and, and TLS 1.2, mm -hmm. right? So that is our constraint. So we tested user space with just TLS 1.2 mm -hmm. and AES 1.28. WRK, I don't think it does. Uh, yeah, uh, and the one more addition to the slide is that um, we have abbreviated TLS handshake and full TLS handshake. The abbreviated are much shorter, and I guess uh, crypto is a bit uh, slower for abbreviated uh, handshake. I'm not sure if I even uh, implemented this one. Uh, so we might have a completely different issue with uh, uh, full handshakes and abbreviated handshakes. Oh. And also this uh, Wolf SSL implementation, uh, which is completely different from OpenSSL, um, they have very strong math uh, and avoids a lot of copies and uh, memory allocations, which are the property of, uh, property of OpenSSL. So Wolf SSL, if it does support uh, KTLS support, uh, might uh, show completely different uh, results either on uh, KTLS if they do support it or for full user space support. Okay. So like uh, the open sale is not, isn't the ideal and isn't the far fastest implementation. So we, we tested, uh, does, does it work? This other library works with uh, Nginx? Maybe we can retest uh, it. It does work with Nginx. We tested it with Nginx. And uh, in, if I recall correctly, there are different numbers, like for abbreviated handshakes, for sale can be faster than open sale, but for full handshakes, open sale can be faster for that workers. So the stuff is changing from version to version, but. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll talk to you after maybe. Yeah. Sir, there's somebody else there. Yeah, and the problem of uh, open cell is that uh, it doesn't use any zero copying. And in this case, the kernel TLS, the software offloading is kind of slow because you really need a lot of copings to, to do the encryption and decryption. 
And by the way, uh, what was the testing environment? You skipped the slides. Uh, yeah, so because we had a lot of data to present. Maybe you go back to the slide on the setup. So I think you're talking about user space TLS, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, pro the, the record protocol happens in the kernel once you go to KTLS. So, and we're using right. send file, so. Yeah, but uh, I'm Zero talking about uh, the, no, the, the kernel, diagram showing. Uh, the kernel version, actually, because there, there were a lot of, oh, no, okay, <laughs> I mean. There was a lot of improvements done in 5.19 and 6.0, so, uh, yeah. Do you mind identifying yourself? Who are you? Mm -hmm. uh, you? You seem to know a lot about this. I know I know most of the players, I guess. You are working on OpenSSL? No, I'm working for Meta. Ah, uh, OK. Well, I was implementing uh, a, a kernel TLS of loading in OpenSSL back uh, in the days. Yeah, yeah, OK, we should talk Just to Just after you. the Boris implemented in for, for FreeBSD. OK, so for KT, you're, you're talking about KTLS, not user space TLS. Right. Right, but where is zero copy involved in this case, other than the, the handshake phase, if we're doing send file? No, no, it's uh, in a data path, actually. OK, but if we're using send file, we're getting that for free, correct? No. Oh, OK, then we need to have a conversation on this. Uh, you, you, you presented uh, the, X, the x86 version maybe two presentations ago? Uh, Wasn't you, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, sorry, Shiji. One more on the bridge. Why not avoid? Well, I mean, the sort of like what Antonio presented this morning. I don't know where he is. <laughs> but, uh, the data path runs in the kernel. Uh, so you have to, uh, once you've, you, you've done the handshake, uh, you have to tell the kernel how to, to uh, encrypt. I think he's saying uh, avoid offloading the handshake itself. We, we don't do handshake in the kernel. We, it's done in user space. That's what I've... I, I don't know if I'm missing the question. Maybe you can ask. Yeah, I'm not sure if the question is fully grokking ah. what the issue is. Yeah. Right. The issue is the offload request in, the, in response to the handshake. Maybe more of a comment than a question. If you are going to retest this, it may be good to to find out the bar where, uh, like you know, how how short should the push of the keys to the to the hardware be so that we can take uh, some advantage of offloading it, because ultimately, you know, any PCI accesses Maybe put the stress. So uh, any PCI accesses takes a couple microseconds stress. at minimum. So you know, maybe there is there is just some bar that right, makes makes pushing yeah. the keys not worth it. Yeah. So it, it is. I think the, from a stress, it's a, it was mostly. I think Boris says this is there's some patches to fix this. This is. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Those are the numbers. But you know, uh, ultimately, if you go to the PCI bus, you can't get below certain threshold, right? Even nice. if you try really hard, you can't beat couple microseconds, tens of microseconds, depending on how many registers you need to write. OK. Suggestions on how we should retest, you said? I mean, just uh, maybe take a look of, of what's the lowest bar for where, where it starts making sense, like on which flows it will start making sense if it takes like 100 microseconds or something like that. OK. Because ultimately, there will be some you know some threshold where, where, where it will start falling off. OK. Sorry, you, you want to say something? But you cannot predict the uh, the amount of data that will be sent on the handshake. Mm, maybe yes, maybe not. Maybe like you know, it probably depends on what you are trying to run, right? Because if you know that you are trying some microservices or something like that, which are living only for you know a couple seconds, even lower, then maybe you know you you will need to to have some kind of mixed model. Seems like we need to talk to all of you guys. You, you, <laughs> you. OK, uh, do we still have time? Because we can, we can go. Yeah, we, we have time. Uh, oh, uh, great. The, the lounge we did will great be open. on the presentation. Drinks will be free. Uh, 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 I thought you were inviting everybody to a lounge. Uh, well, uh, well like, uh, unless you, if we have time, we'll take more questions, right? Yeah, or more comments. Yeah. Uh, we, we have time. OK, so. Yeah, oh, uh, Mike, Mike. 
Well, not really relevant to data path, but um, how the in case we're using TA4 TCP fast open, so can you avoid some leaking? You know, some of the TLS handshake. I don't know how your experiment is uh, coordinating with TA4 or even enabled uh, or we, not. We just run vanilla stuff. The only thing we changed is uh, TA4 enabled by default. Or I don't, I know. don't know. Did we? Is it in? By, I don't think it's on by default. Uh, is it on by default on Ubuntu or whatever Debian that we use? But the application has to use explicitly. Oh, explicitly. The, uh, the app has to know about it. Okay. okay. I, I don't know. I don't think uh, Nginx knows about it. Unless somebody else can correct us. Is there, is there is, uh, Nginx, is Nginx aware of TF4 or TCP? Like it's a set sock opt, you're saying? Okay. That's, a, that's another thing to try, you're saying. Maybe we can, we can hack it to do that and see what happens. So I, I think the overall cost is not so much the setup but rather the set SOC to offload the, the crypto. That's where the expense is, right? But I think the, the scene exchange is pretty, is, is minute in comparison to this. Right, does that make sense? We, we're getting killed by the set SOC opt after, to, 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 after the handshake is complete and we're trailing the, the record protocol what to do. Okay. Anything else for you? I think that's uh, that's uh, that's the last question. So thank you for finishing on time and thank you for the talk. Um, thank you. We, our next session will be starting in a few minutes. Thank you.